Another year, another season down, and Peter Weber's season was one to never be forgotten. No matter how hard I try. Now, it's become a tradition that once every season of The Bachelor, Bachelorette, and Bachelor in Paradise ends, I come along and give it a grade based on four main categories. The lead, the cast, the production, and the most recent addition to the grading system, the romance factor. Cause isn't that the premise of the whole show? I'm also going to add in a new mini category that won't affect the final grade, as it's not really a part of the season experience. This one's called Likelihood to Last. And what's that? They've broken up? Already? Okay, well, never mind then. Now, with each of these main categories, I try to focus on entertainment value as the primary grading point, because sometimes you can hate a villain, but if they provide good entertainment that actually helps lift the show, it's gonna get a high grade. Now, if all they do is frustrate you to the point of you saying, okay, Peter, when are you just going to eliminate them already? It's gonna get a low grade. I'll provide a more detailed example of this once we get to the cast category. So, let's get into it. And I'll admit, right now I kind of feel like a teacher who's about to pick up the test of the troublemaker in class. I know this isn't going to be good, but it has to be done. So first up, the lead. Remember when Peter was the lovable pilot who stayed out of all the drama on The Bachelorette? Yeah, I remember that. Remember his hometown date where we fell in love with the Webbers and didn't find them horribly frustrating at all? Oh, I remember. Ah, those were the good old days. So Peter Weber undeniably was not well suited for this role. I'm sure we could do a deep dive into Peter's intentions and they might be mostly positive, but at the end of the day, it led us to, well, this mess. Even Peter himself says he knows he was a far from perfect lead. Like I said, I've made more mistakes than you could ever make as a bachelor. So let's talk about some of those mistakes. First off, rewarding the drama. Do you regret giving some of these other girls that caused a lot of drama so much opportunity to get to know you? Also getting rid of Savannah, wish we got to see more of her. Peter seemed validated by drama, and while I get why that can happen to you, it is a show where it's so hard to weed through what feelings are true and grand emotional gestures stand out, there were some questionable decisions made in a situation where so many people's feelings are involved. Like when Sydney called out Alea and then Peter put her on the spot in front of everyone on the group date. And when she does, Peter rewards her with a rose, which sends a certain message to the other women. Oh, okay, this works. Even though it turned out there was more to the story. Still, when Victoria does the same, she's rewarded with sending Alea home. And the funny thing is, Alea pulls out the Uno reversal card and does the same thing to everyone else, coming back and making this grand gesture that Peter, of course, rewards with a rose. Then again, when all the women revolt, Peter reverses that decision and sends Alea home. Like we're watching a back and forth, back and forth tennis match of drama here. There was how much Peter got invested in Victoria F, even though she was surrounded in drama and constantly walking away, questioning everything and shutting herself off to him. But then with Kelly, when she too was not opening up to Peter, he turned away from her. The only real difference between the two was Kelly wasn't dramatic about it all and almost no conflicts between women this season were resolved with Peter's intervention. Like, Peter got Tammy and McKenna to have a little two-on-one after their drama spat, but even then, he just sent McKenna packing at the rose ceremony immediately following it. Not to mention everything with Madison and Hannah Ann at the end. I mean, he didn't even mention to Hannah Ann that she was the only one left on the show until he proposed, and even then, it was ambiguous as to how it went down. And really, at the end of the day, it was all a little more frustrating than it was entertaining. Leading Peter to receive a grade of... D-. The positive I'll say for Peter is at least he owned up to making mistakes. And I don't think he was trying to be malicious or mean or disregard people's feelings. I think he simply let too much happen and he likely wanted to be a quote, good bachelor. So he was too open to whatever production wanted. Leading to a drama-heavy season. Next category, the cast. No good season of The Bachelor lies solely on the shoulders of the lead. A great cast of women is just as important, but in the same way, a weak cast can bring a season down. And I think this time around, we got a bit of a perfect storm. 
Now, there have been bright spots in this season. Obviously, most everyone in Bachelor Nation is standing Hannah Ann right now, and I thought she composed herself very well and was incredibly articulate during an emotional time, as she was being broken up with and then on the After the Final Rose. I know there are a lot of Kelly, Madison, and Kelsey stands, but think earnestly. Was there anyone you really rooted for throughout this whole season? And if there was, think in comparison to past Bachelors or Bachelorettes. Every single person, at least the ones who were central figures in the show, had drama attached to them. Madison, the fantasy sweet stuff. Hannah Ann, Champagne Gate. Kelsey, also Champagne Gate and the stuff with Tammy. Victoria F., Chase Rice, Mystery Woman Marissa, basically her entire time on the show. Kelly, cheating in the first group date challenge, unacceptable. We had Victoria P., Sydney, and Lexi, who if this was high school, the others would be calling them the plastics. There was everything with Alea and Sydney, then Alea and Victoria F. The I know her, actually we went to Vegas together, she's fake, but also let's hug. There was Tammy, who went from lovable lady making funny faces to all over the drama. Every time a camera was around, you'd always spread your legs and like, you would always just stare at you. McKenna was... Okay, McKenna was actually kind of great. She was like a John Paul Jones in that you knew he was never going to end up with Hannah Brown, so you never took him too seriously, and that made him fun to watch. Speaking of which, McKenna and John Paul Jones, am I shipping that? Yeah, I'm shipping that. Almost paradise. And I'm also pausing here to cite McKenna as an example of someone who gets a higher grade than others for me. She was fun. Like I said, I never took her too seriously, so I never got peeved when she was in drama. That entertainment value kicked in. I mean, come on, the tongue montage, the... I don't know what your goal was the other night, maybe to make me feel small and weak, but at the end of the day, you made me found my damn voice. Her trying so fiercely to give the inspiring speech of the century, but falling a little bit short is fun, not cringy. Well, okay, just a little bit cringy, but in a strangely endearing way. And it was entertaining stuff that didn't go so far as to annoy me. But for the most part, everything else pushed that line. And I do feel like there were ladies with a lot of potential to become favorites, but they just got eliminated way too soon. Savannah, for sure, but what about Marissa or Sarah? Guess we'll never really know, so with everything we do know, this cast gets a D+. Which means production is next. And this one's getting an A+. Okay, now that any producers have clicked off the video, let's have a real chat. Have you ever watched a dramatic moment in a season and thought, hmm, this seems a little forced, a little set up. A good season will always have some producers pushing good TV, but in a great season, it will go nearly unnoticed. This season, however, it felt very loud. Oh, a sudden champagne bottle waiting for us. Nice, I'm gonna grab that right up. Oh, here's Hannah Brown on night one. Oh, here's Hannah Brown again. Oh my goodness, my ex is here at our one-on-one, -on -one, and he's the musical entertainment. Oh, Alea made her way back to the show. Oh, Kelly is suddenly a villain after not involving herself in the three-on-one drama. Oh, this mystery woman's here to fill Peter in on some juicy details about Victoria F. Oh, we only booked one room for you all during Fantasy Suite Week. Oh, we're going to tell you Hannah Ann might not come for your proposal, and then five seconds later, JK, she's here. Wow. And to think all of this was just pure coincidence. But really, some of this drama was also unnecessary. Like, if the Chase Rice thing never happened, would we feel any different about this season? We'd still have everything else about Victoria, and all it really did was nothing. The two moved on with the strength that carried Victoria to the final three. And okay, there was good drama this season. Not all of it was bad. I'll take back the mystery woman Marissa stuff because that led to great drama with Peter and Victoria during her hometown. Now, why was that good drama and the other stuff not? Because something was actually at stake there. For the first time ever, Victoria and Peter had a date with some actual romance and a connection that didn't end in tears or an argument. The Marissa stuff put all that in danger. It raised the stakes of the moment because there was suddenly something to lose making the drama all the more enticing. And here's the main reason why this season was bad, why this season didn't work. The drama overtook the romance. So this is a good time to say the production got a D and move on to the romance. The reason why we're all here. The most important part of the season. It's the premise of the whole show. Yeah, the Bachelor shows are a bit of a fantasy, but it's a fantasy involving love and romance. 
and real families and relationships are formed from this franchise. And my argument is that the romance needs to be at the center of everything. Otherwise, a season falls flat. Like I mentioned before, the romance provides stakes. The romance is a thing the lead or the person he's with could potentially lose. If there's romance, we care about a relationship. And once we actually care about a relationship, then the drama can come in and put those relationships at risk. And if a relationship we care about is at risk, we want to watch. We want to see the struggle. But we need to care about that relationship and the people involved in it in order for that to happen. This season focused so much on eye-popping TV and hooks to keep you watching till the next episode that it fell short on the romantic journey. And that is probably a fault of all three elements, all three categories from before. The cast, the production team, and the lead. So this season, the romance gets a D-. Really, the only reason this is not an F is because of Hannah Brown at the beginning. Seriously. Her with Peter was the most invested I was in in any relationship all season long. Now the good news is, it would seem that the people at The Bachelor are trying to reinvest in romance with the upcoming season of The Bachelorette, or at least trying to find a good balance between romance and drama. So there's hope yet. Now, when you put all these scores together, the overall grade for the season is... a D. <laughs> Season 24 was one focused on drama and forgetting the essence of the show. Good at times, frustrating at others, it had some bright spots but not enough to overshadow the negatives. So that's it for this video on why this season was bad, grading Peter's season of The Bachelor. Hope you enjoyed it and be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts and grades in the comment section below. There's more off-season content on the way and just a month until listen to your heart. So until next video, Bachelor fan take, out. Like I said, I've made more mistakes than you could ever make as a bachelor.